Hello folks, and thank you for joining us again. We are continuing our series on dovetails. Now, in the previous episode, we talked about laying out the boards for front, back, left, right, uh, inside, outside, tails, pins, and using the marking gauge on it. Now, if you didn't see that video, I'll have a link below in the description for you to catch up with us. Today, we're going to talk about the dovetail angles as well as the spacing for the actual tails and pins. Okay, so if you've looked at furniture, you probably noticed that dovetail angles can really range from something really broad to something that's almost straight. And is there a reason for that? Well, yes, there is a theory behind it. So let's think about steel for a second. If you have steel, and it's soft, well, it's not going to be real strong, but it will be flexible. You can bend it. However, if that steel is treated, well, now it becomes really rigid and very strong. However, when too much force is applied to it, it will break and fracture. All right, the same thing has to do with wood. So if we're dealing with soft wood, we can have a broader angle on the dovetail. The reason being is when pressure is applied against this, the softwood has room to compress a little bit. However, on a hardwood, well, it's not going to compress that much. It's going to break. So in that case, we would have an angle that's not as wide. Okay. So now we understand, in theory, why there's the different angles. Well, what are these angles? Are we just guessing at them? So you've probably looked in books and plans and watched videos online, and you hear them talk either about ratios or degrees. So let's take a look at that. So ratios are essentially a fraction, which is rise over run. Now, if we're dealing with that hardwood, like we said, we don't want a real big angle. So we would go with something, say, like 1 to 9. And I can set this bevel on here, lock it in place. And now I can use this for my dovetail angle. However, if we're dealing with something such as the softwood, well, we would change that to a wider angle. And so once again, I can set a bevel to go to say like 1 to 5. So you might read in some plans or books, it'll say make your dovetail angles at like 11 degrees. Well, what you could do then is just take a protractor and you would change your bevel angle to go to that 11 degrees. In this case, a 5 over 1 is the same as approximately 11 degrees. Now, what I like to do instead of using this big bevel on my board, especially if it's a small board, uh, this can get kind of big and clumsy. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've made a little dovetail marking gauge that's set for 5 to 1. All right, so now we explained the angles and why it's used. Now, here's something that's kind of interesting. In 1958, the U.S. Forest Research Laboratories conducted a test of the different angles, everything from 7 degrees to 17 degrees. And they used a variety of woods, from soft to hardwoods. And what they found was that the strength of the joint was determined by the fit, not the angle. So in other words, after you just learned all about that, pick an angle that's pleasing to your eye. Okay, now let's move on to the actual layout of the dovetails to get the spacing and the one that looks best for us. And let me show you that now. Alright, so I have a board set up here in the vise and I'm going to actually lay out the spacing for the size of the dovetails and the pins and I'm going to show you two methods to do this. Now the first method is a method that Alan Peters used. Alan Peters was an amazing furniture maker over there in the UK 
And this is his method for laying out the dovetails and pins. Now, Christopher Schwartz showed this method in a video a couple of years ago, and so I think it's worth showing to you guys. Now, if you really like your dovetails to be precise and exactly laid out, this is how you would do it. So the first thing I want to start off with is I need to establish what my half pins are going to be. Now the rule of thumb for a half pin is you take the thickness of the material, you cut it in half, and that's what you step over. So in this case here, I have 3 quarters inch stock, half of that is 3 eighths. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to mark 3 eighths of an inch. Now I have my dovetail marking gauge, and what I really like about this is not only do I get my angle for it, but it also gives me the perpendicular line too. So when I mark this, mark the angle, and I can mark a line going down, which is really going to aid me later when it comes to cutting this. Okay, so I'm going to draw my line. And... And same thing, I'm going to come over here, 3 eighths, and draw my line. Okay, so the half pins are established. Now, I have to decide how many actual dovetails do I want on this board. You can make it as many as you want. In this case, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to go with three. So I have a pair of dividers and I just have them set roughly, okay? And I'm going to put the dividers on here, and you'll notice I'm not on the edge of the board. I'm on that half pin, and I'm going to pace them off. So I'm going to say one, two, three. Now the dividers go past the board, but that's okay. What this is representing is from the edge of the divider to that half pin, that's going to be the space or the size of the pins. Now that measured out to be, let me do that again, that measured out to be like three quarters of an inch. I think that's going to be too big for my pin. So I'm going to move this in just a little and piece it off once again. Alright, so now I got about three eighths of an inch for the size of the pin. So now I'm going to mark it. One, two, goes over. Now what I do is I reset the dividers. I'm going to start on this end of the half pin and mark again. One, two, three goes over. So now I have my mark set and I can draw my lines. my pins and tails. Okay, and we know that those are all exactly the same size now, and that's great. But for me personally, I like to be a little variation in them. See, if I make a piece years from now, I want someone to be able to look at it and examine it. I want it to look good, but I want them to see that maybe a tail or a pin is slightly different in size. That will tell them that it truly was hand cut and wasn't done by a machine. So let me show you another method now that I think is easier and faster. Okay, this method is one that Frank Klaus uses and Frank has made so many dovetails he's probably made more dovetails than he signed his name. So let me show you his method. 
Once again, we're going to go with that same rule of thumb. So half of the thickness of our board is what we will start with that half pin being moved over. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to say there. So we'll do that for both sides. And once again, I will draw the half pins in. All right, now I'm going to decide the size of the tail. And so I'm just going to go with the thickness of this gauge. All right, from this half pin up to this full tail, I'm going to approximately get the middle of this distance. So I'm going to say here. All right, so I know the size of the tail. Now I'm going to try and keep that relatively close to make the size of my other tails. Again, just eyeballing that. And there we go. Now, if you were to measure these, they'd be slightly off. But by looking at them, they look pretty good. So you can see that this works and you can do three, five, ten, as many as you want. This method will work. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop here for today. On the next episode, we're actually going to go into cutting out the dovetails for the pins and so on. Now, I have a confession to make to you guys. I've been doing furniture for 20 years, but I'm not very good with a handsaw. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that I use that help me cut my dovetails straight and get a good fit. And if it's going to work for me, well, it's probably going to work for you, seeing that this is probably going to be your first dovetail that you do. So tune in for that next Friday. Now, we still have more videos before then. On Monday, we have videos from all around the world. Yes, we show off what you guys are making out there. So if you would like to have some of your work on our show, go ahead and email me at stantonfinefurniture at gmail.com, and we'll get you and your projects on the show. And then on Wednesday, well, I tell you what we're building in our shop here, as well as we talk about some email questions uh, from viewers such as yourself, and we talk about tools and my impression of how they performed. Well, if you like this, please subscribe. And on, by, on behalf of myself and Safety Dan, go dance now, people.